You know how I've been wanting to buy this truck and I've been so busy with work that I haven't been able to make it into the dealership? Well, Raritans of Monroe is actually bringing the vehicle to me. I gotta go, it looks like it's here right now, I'll call you back. Too busy to schedule a test drive? Raritans of Monroe will bring the test drive to you. It's part of our new concierge service personalized car shopping built for today's customer. It's another reason why Raritans of Monroe is a customer service champion. Let us know what we can do for you. When you shop at Ace Hardware in Everett and Lake Stevens, we'll help you find what you're looking for and offer friendly advice too. Owners Greg and Christine are all about serving their customers and their community. They support local high school sports and many other community organizations and events. So the next time you need help with your to-do list or project around the house, bring it to Ace. They'll greet you at the door and help you find whatever you need fast. Show your support for locally owned businesses. Shop Ace Hardware just off Highway 9 in Lake Stevens and Evergreenway in Everett. Ace is the place with... Nice job by Hoiby getting in, kicks it out. Capone, long shot, misses it. Rebound comes down into the hands of Chapin. Good box out by Chapin under there to get that rebound. Jackson, two possessions, no points to show for it thus far. Now Vernon trying to extend their lead. Nice pick off there by Liddell. And now one minute into the action. Liddell, long two-pointer, switch. Liddell from about eight feet, 18 feet out. Good start for Christian tonight. And Hoiby looking to put a little pressure on Mount Vernon. In the hands of Isaiah Brown. Brown driving left side, draws contact. And we'll have our first free throw attempts of the night coming up. Our first foul for that matter too with 6.41 to go here in the first quarter. And they're going to call that on Hoiby, his first. We got a free throw sponsor tonight, Todd. Gamut 360. Gamut 360. Our friends from Gamut back in the house tonight. We appreciate everything they do to make all of these broadcasts a possibility. Round two for two at the line. Makes it a 4-2 game. Mount Vernon with their second lead of the night. Nice kick ahead. Olsen baseline, left side. Finger rolls it up and good. Ben with her, his first points of the evening. 4-4 game. Kick out, right corner, left corner rather. Three ball up in the air, missed. Rebound comes down into the hands of Sammy Oliver. It's over to Chase Calvin. Playing a little back and forth with Oliver. Calvin with the ball right now. Turn around, spin move, fade away jumper. Just leaves it a bit short. Rebound comes into the hands of Capone. Jackson looking for their first lead of the evening. Liddell, three ball, rips around, falls off. Hoiby up for the offensive board, misses the shot. And That's Chase Calvin able to come away with it. Calvin, who, by the way, averages 10.4 rebounds per game. He's had five different double-double rebounding games this year already. Not gonna go against uh, Grayson. That's Isaiah Brown. Great, great number wrong team there, Ron. Oh, yeah. Isaiah Brown. Oh, Brown. Yeah. All-world point guard, if you will, for <laughs> Bill Chuck, and once again, the Bulldogs employing the press. Jackson able to beat it down the floor. Setting up their offense one more time. That's the travel. They're not calling the travel like they did the other night. <laughs> Liddell, 15 footer, rolls off. Having trouble finding that inner part of the rim tonight. He's had it roll around on the cylinder a couple times now and fall out. 4 4 tie. 5-11 to go, first quarter. Fade away shot along the baseline. Calvin going up and over Capone. Gets the offensive board. Capone says, you can have the rebound. I'll take the block into the hands of Liddell. Here come the Timberwolves on the other end of the floor. And Olsen slowing things down a bit. Arab over to Capone. They're working the ball from right to left. Christian Liddell into the lane, sees Capone down, low reverse layup, up and in. Sharing the love there, the ball traveling around all over the floor. Liddell getting the assist, Capone getting the bucket. 6-4 game, we've got five different players combined with two points each in this game. Coming up on the halfway mark through the first quarter. A little dribbling exercise there. <laughs> oh, that should have been a foul. 
Did you see the elbow go to the chest? Yeah, they didn't call the elbow, but they called the travel instead. Wow. Isaiah Brown working his way down towards the basket. Once again, Mount Vernon. They're letting the contact go, that's for sure. Putting the press on, Jackson one more time, able to get it down the other end. Ben Olson for three, hits it! Olson with five points here in the first quarter, and that is what the lead is at right now. Jackson, 9-4. Turnabout is fair play. They say you can press us, we can press you too. And we're going to get a second travel called. Nice defense there by the Timberwolves to force the travel, and we get our first substitution here of the game as Scotty Forbes checks in for Mount Vernon. Forbes is a six foot one junior. Get used to us saying junior and, and sophomore a lot with Mount Vernon. The roster contains five juniors, five sophomores, not a single senior. This is a team that a lot of folks around Westco are already talking about for next year. Mount Vernon says, forget next year. We want to talk about this year. Corum for three. Front iron bounces off. Capone goes to attempt to grab a rebound there, and in the process draws contact, and Capone called for his first foul of the night. Second foul against the Timberwolves here in the first quarter. Timberwolves aren't afraid to mix it up in their game last week against the Glacier Cake. I think they had like 25 fouls in the game, so a couple guys fouled out here. Yeah, well, you, were, uh, you guys were pointing out to me a 35-20 was the score at halftime. Glacier Peak had 20 points on only two field goals. That tells you that that's a team that's going to the free throw line quite a bit. Yeah. And Coach Valentine from Mount Vernon says, you know what, we need to take a quick break here. We're, this is getting away from us. It's going to call a 30-second timeout. First of the game. And we'll take a break. We'll take a quick break. You're watching STSPN. Did you know that Speedway Chevrolet is part of the Lee Johnson Auto family? That means 84 years of serving you the LJ way. Need a truck? We have the perfect truck to fit your needs. Half tons, one ton, two wheel drives, and four wheel drives. Our finance specialists are here to help you, whether you have good credit or bad credit. We're just off Highway 522 at West Main Street in Monroe. Lee Johnson Auto family, the LJ way. Welcome back one more time to the den here at Jackson High School in Mill Creek, Washington. Wesco 4A basketball action here on STSPN. Jackson on a 7 0 run right now. Built a 9 4 lead. A little bit halfway through the first quarter right now. Burning driving baseline, trying to kick it back out. Ball gets taken away by Capone. Up to Liddell, behind the back, into the lane, it dishes to Hoiby, kicks it out to Capone, back into the lane, puts it up off the backboard and in. Capone, that was a rough, hard drive to the basket. Nice, easy layup on the end of it. Really impressed with the selflessness that just this Jackson team plays with. And that will end the streak right there as Kane Kress gets his first basket of the evening. Crushes the 9-0 Jackson run that we had going there. 11-6 score, 2.35 to go here. First quarter, Liddell, three ball up and in. Give him five points for the quarter. 14-6 Jackson lead, their largest of the night. Maybe we'll have a battle tonight between Liddell and Olsen on uh, who's going to make the most threes. Forbes missing a shot. Capone gets another rebound. Boyby with that nice long flowing hair to Liddell in the corner off the back iron. Capone, nice offensive board, goes right back up again, misses it. Boyby loses the ball. They're going to say, however, that the Bulldogs touched it last. We'll keep the ball right back down here. As Jalen Searles gets ready to check in for the first time tonight. That traveled again. I don't know why they aren't calling him on that. Boyby, over to Liddell, left side. Goes baseline, towards the basket, puts it up a little too hard off the glass. Corb goes right back up with it. Draws contact and he'll hit to the line for two. And that's gonna go against Calvin. Oh, oh, Forbes on that one. Well, he's gonna call Calvin too. Corb looking to get on the board for the first time this evening. Basket is up and in. 
That's the first free throw attempt for the Timberwolves here. Yeah, Moiby's going to go to the bench. Free flowing hair there. It looks like Lawrence, the quarterback for Clemson. Yeah. I don't know if you saw the uh, the hair flip. Yeah, he had a lot of blonde hair flowing out of that helmet. And we're going to see that flowing hair for a long time. He is one heck of a quarterback. Yeah, Second freshman. free throw up and in. True freshman, I remember, right? True freshman. Yeah. Already a, a media sensation, already a national champ. And those golden locks already going viral with that hair flip he did during the game the other day. Yeah. Ooh, Olsen going for the pick move. Oh. So he reached in and got contact, his first foul. He was the adrenaline fundraising player of the night. He was, and he was, a, he was a Twitter sensation. <laughs> I, I noticed that. A lot, a lot of hits, as I like to say. Yeah, I think he's got a lot of friends. <laughs> uh, ben Olsen, good, good kid. We just had him in the radio studio at KRKO about two weeks ago for Prep Sports Week, along with Christian Liddell and Joe Capone. Good group of guys. Shot was partially blocked by Liddell. It was. Nice job by Capone to recognize the fact that they touched the last. Saves it over to Ben Olsen. Into the lane, loses the ball. Draws contact, he'll head to the line for two. Ben's not afraid to go to the hoop against anybody. That was a pretty big man he went after there. Liam Johnston, number 10, is going to check into the game for Mel Vernon. Six foot one sophomore. Chapin gets called for the foul, his first. Olsen, nothing but net on that shot. Ben pretty consistent at the line. I don't want to jinx him or anything, but. Good to see him in there, too. I know uh, arm injury during the football season this year. Leg injury, I think, what his sophomore year during football. Forced him to miss his entire sophomore year. He was four for four from the line in his last game of the For six, uh, six for six, actually. And we get yet another turnover. Jackson already up by 12. Looking to extend that right now. Now Vernon jumping out to a four to two lead. Since that time, it has been all Jackson on a 16 to two run. 107 to go here, first quarter. From the den, Liddell looking to go down low to Serrells. Couldn't quite come up with it. Serrells, who started his career out at Cascade High School before transferring over to Jackson last year. Been a welcome addition to this team. Now down under a minute to go, first quarter. Isaiah Brown looking on Kevin Hahn, who's getting his first action of the night, number one. Shot clock down to 18. Trying to get Calvin down low, ball gets batted away. Liddell comes up with it, pulls up from 16 feet out, good. Liddell with seven points, 35 seconds to go in the quarter, and Mount Vernon says we can't wait that long. We need a break now. They call their second timeout here of the first quarter. First one was a 30. This is a full. We will take a quick break. It's all Jackson so far here tonight from the den. You are watching STSPN. 35.0 seconds left here in the first quarter. The Jackson Timberwolves, the first place Jackson Timberwolves, out to a 20 to 6 lead. Steve Willits along with Ron Henthorne and Todd Elvick here. Bulldog's gonna try to see if they can get a score in here for this quarter end. They could use it. Kevin Hahn has other ideas. Number one. And I didn't see the call there, Ron. Uh, look, Steve Landro whistled it. I, I don't know if he went out of bounds or not. I didn't see a foul call. Might have, so. Yeah, I didn't see anything whistled in that regard. So it might have just been a good old fashioned line. stepped on the line or bounced it on the line. Yeah. And Jackson's going to play for the final shot. In this case, with another turnover, I got seven turnovers for the Bulldogs so far, and it's only one for. It's not the good Wolves. when your, your turnovers outnumber your points. Yeah. And <laughs> we're seeing that right now. We're now down to 10 seconds to go here in the quarter. Olsen into the lane. Easy, easy. Jump easy roll. layup. The defense peeled off onto the potential targets for passing, and Ben Olsen lays it up. He finishes the quarter with nine points, and more importantly for Jackson, they've got a 16-point lead. It is 22 to 6 after eight minutes of play. We're going to take a break and come back with the second quarter. We're going to restart this because I can see that there's some kind of video issue. So we're going to restart this stream here in a second. Sounds like a plan. You're watching STS. Yeah, Jackson dominating the first quarter. 22-6 lead on the Mount Vernon Bulldogs. Jalen Searles gets in, blocks the shot, gets it himself, drives, gets fouled from behind. That's what you call a one-stop shopping right there. Take care of everything yourself. Block the shot. 
come up with the steal, go down to the other end, draw the foul, and head to the line for two. Chapin didn't like getting that shot blocked, so he just went down there and said, you're not gonna make a basket the easy way. I'm gonna hold your hand. Smart move, make him earn it as long as you don't. Get called for an intentional. Searles, his first points of the night. Fifth different Timberwolf to get on the board. 23-6 score. 24-6 now. Timberwolf six for six in the line, 100%. Just as many points at the line as Mount Vernon has points for the game. Oh, yeah. That, that was until Isaiah Brown with the layup. Drives into the lane, right on the other end. Kevin Hahn says, you know what? I'll match your two right there. We have Hoiby, Hahn, Liddell, and Searles on the floor right now. Liddell into the lane, floater off the back iron, bounces out. Forbes grabs the rebound. Here comes Mount Vernon on the other end. God, Searles the reach in, trying to pick his pocket. Cross contact instead. Girls with his first. Ben Olson checking back in for Jackson. Mount Vernon having Spencer Dutton, number one, check in for the first time tonight. And Kane Crest, number 13, one of their starters, went back into the game. Olson almost with a steal there, knocks it out of bounds. One thing about the, see about the Jackson Timberwolves here is that uh, Coach Steve Johnson pretty much runs all these kids in there as we see, uh, I think Grayson coming in right now for Searles. He runs a full bench in there. Yeah, Grayson, a six foot one senior. You know, you can run a full bench in one when you have a lot of talent, two when you get big leads. And Johnson has the luxury of doing both. Calvin, nice move down low. Six points all here in the second quarter. 30-14 is our score. 5.39 to go, first half. Traveling called, and all of a sudden, Mount Vernon put on a little bit of a run. Four straight points, and they'll look to extend upon that right now as Joe Capone comes in. He had four points in the first quarter. And we're back on. Todd Elvick, you are amazing, sir. <laughs> you might have, you might have I, don't know, I don't know what that was all about. I, it had something to do with uh, the codec I was using, I was trying to compress it a little bit more than we should be, so. Gotta, gotta thank our, our pal Scott Oshman, one of our colleagues for notifying us of the issue there. No shot, they're gonna say the foul came before the whistle. Well, that was really bad timing on my part because uh, I've been talking with the, uh, I got an email back from uh, Arena Sports and uh, they uh, they might wanna have something to do with us, but. I told him to go out and watch tonight, <laughs> and that's just great. They'll see plenty of those. We've had an action-packed second quarter for those who are just getting this again as we were off there for a couple of minutes. Each team's with eight points here in the quarter. Chase Calvin for Chase Mount Vernon coming alive. He's got six points here all in the quarter. Isaiah Brown also with a layup. Jackson was up 30 to 10 a minute ago. They were Capone. Uh, hey, we got called. So he'll go to the line. And also, Kevin Hahn, four points in the quarter for Jackson. And Jalen Searles has four points as well. Get that foul on Sammy Oliver, his first. Capone at the line shooting two, first one up and in. One more shot to come. Uh, and he breaks the streak. Broke the streak, but they got an offensive board and Ben Olsen takes it out on that right wing and says, you know what, we're gonna slow it down just a bit. Cora back to Olsen into the lane, fires it high off the backboard. He had to make a little uh, loopy loop move because he knew he was gonna get fouled there. He wasn't gonna go straight in. He did what he needed to do to get to the line and he's gonna have a shot at two free throws here. Oliver with his second foul, both coming on this possession. Thirty-one fourteen, make it thirty-two fourteen. Olson, three for three at the line tonight. And Ten points for the game. <laughs> Fans doing a little three-two-one. I think it's positivity is what I heard. Well done, guys. Thirty-three fourteen is our score. Jackson leading by nineteen here at home. Calvin. Hot hand here in the second quarter. The hand might have cooled off just a little bit there. Fires that one over the cylinder. 
Hoiby into the lane, a little bit reckless, goes from right to left. Wisely slows it down a little bit. Korab over to Grayson, back to Olsen up on top. Working that clock down a little bit, no rush. Hoiby, baseline, Grayson, 12-foot floater, good. Nice job by the Timberwolves there. All five players touching it on that possession. Is that like an almost a non-look pass by Hoiby there? A little bit of a non-look for him. He knew exactly where his player was going to be. So when these guys have a lot of practice together. Hoiby's going to pick up a second foul on the press. Sixth team foul on the Timberwolves, so one more will put Mount Vernon into the bonus. Jackson already at the bonus with seven fouls against Mount Vernon in the first half. And we still have 4.17 to go here in the second quarter. Yeah, they got uh, Kristen Liddell in for Hoiby there after that little exchange. Yeah, Liddell with seven first quarter points, if you can add to that. Baseline, Cora blocks it out of bounds, nicely done. Forbes trying a few different moves. There a spin move. How do you say it, Koreb? Yeah. We want to do a shout out to uh, his family that's watching from Hurricane Utah. Hurricane Utah. I'll have to look that one up later, find out where that's at. Nice job by Grayson. There must be a ridge out there over the Hurricane Ridge, right? Grayson looked like he was on his way to Hurricane Utah there, traveling to the south end of the floor. Couldn't quite save that ball as Ethan Chapman comes back into the game. Well, we welcome all the folks from Hurricane Utah and wherever else you might be watching tonight. Wesco 4A basketball. This is a Mount Vernon team that's much better than they've been in years past, and they show it right there. Nice floater from Chris. He now has four points. The point I was about to make was that this is a team that is not going to necessarily go away easy. This is a Mount Vernon squad that two, three, four years ago, maybe if you drew out a 19-point lead in the first half, it was game over. This is a team that has the potential to fight back. Liddell, three ball misses it. Korab, nice job. Tries to save it and does before it goes out of bounds to Grayson. They're going to slow things down a bit. You're absolutely right. The Bulldogs can come back to this game. It's just a matter of whether they get the hot hand or not. Korab, first field goal of the night. Goes along nicely with the two free throws he had in the first quarter. Three ball on the other end, left it short. That was Forbes with the shot. Capone with the rebound. Jackson already with their largest lead of the evening, looking for more. Olsen floats into the lane and draws contact. And he will head back to the line for two more free throws. Press picks up his first time. Let's see if Olsen can keep his streak going here. I think so you had off. to say something, didn't you? I think so. We want to thank, yeah. thank Scotty for uh, giving us a heads up. I'd already thanked Scotty a moment ago. Oh, yeah, that's too, right. So. Yeah. He, can think, thank hey, he deserves two thank yous for that one. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, Scotty thank him. I'll thank him, too. It'll be three. The funny <laughs> thing is I had no indication whatsoever in the software that something was going haywire. Well, that's an unusual. Fans didn't think that was help helpful for Ben in this suit. <laughs> What's going on, Ben? Olsen misses two shots, and we have software issues. It's a full moon tonight, or maybe it is anyway. Liddell. Nice pass from Olsen. He draws more contact. And once again, Jackson's going to step back to the free throw line with another two free throws attempt. This is uh, Christian Liddell's. First attempt from the line tonight. Probably won't be his last. No, I don't think so either. Gets the first one to go, and unofficially, I've got Jackson right now for at 10 for 12 for the evening from the free throw line. Ron, I'll let you count that up to see if my finger math is any good. Count that one as well. Adele nine points here on the evening. 23 point lead for Jackson. With lofty goals, helping to win the Wesco 4A regular season title. 11 for 14 is what I got, Jackson. Ball's tipped oh. away. Spin move into the lane. Calvin will put up a nine foot floater. Gets that one to go. Give Chris the assist on the play. Calvin with eight points, all here in the second quarter. Down to 2 12 remaining in the first half. 39 18, Jackson lead. Searles for three, wow. hits it. 
42-18, Jackson continuing to build. A very impressive first half lead. Jackson not afraid to shoot the three ball. Ben's going to get four here. Ben did not like that one at all. He thought he got all ball. The, uh, the body of Dutton kind of falling through, made contact. And Ben felt he had a clean pick on that player, at least knocked the ball away. I don't know if he would have picked it or not. He hit it into the backcourt. Ben's going to take a seat with two fouls as Nick Sissom comes into the game. We'll see who picks up the slack on the three-pointers. Ben had five of them in the last game against GP, so we'll see what he does. Grab by 24, you may not even need a three-pointer right now. And they missed the front end of the one-and-one. One. Calvin, nice job of hustling to the ball. He's able to beat Kevin Hong over to the spot. Steve Johnson letting his team know about it, said you guys just didn't block out right. Hong with only his first foul of the game. Jackson for Jackson for having eight fouls against them. They're doing a nice job of spreading the fouls around. Hoybe and Olsen each have two, and another missed front end of the one and one. Jackson a little bit of a reprieve there. 137 to go here in the half. Tony. Letting things set up themselves right now. No need to rush. 15 seconds to go on the shot clock. Searles, right side, floats it up. Yep, that grab. Jackson getting very familiar with that free throw line tonight. They're going to step back there for two more shots here. And Perez picks up his third foul. First shot by Searles in. Try to come back and overcome a 25 point deficit right now. As Searles hits the second one, we'll making a 26 point deficit. You've got Crest with three, Oliver with two, Chapin with two. Oh, they were going to say no basket, lane violation. On, oh, really? Called against Jackson. Well, it's not impossible to do. I think. Uh, GP was down like 16, 15, or 16 at the half. <laughs> yeah, 35 uh, 20, right. And uh, they came back and got it within, well, they tied it up like a minute to go, you know. I think that was mostly because the uh, fouls that uh, Jackson was doing early on caught up with him a little bit. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right, and that's the thing that Jackson's been able to avoid tonight. Mount Vernon, I think, with what, four free throw attempts tonight, Ron? Is that right? Four, yeah. Two for four? Yeah, two so for four. So a vastly different game in that regard, whereas Glacier Peak. I know after the first half, had what, 16 points from the free throw line alone. Yeah, different different ball game for sure. And we'll be curious to see how Steve Johnson's team comes out in the second half. He's going to remind those guys at halftime, don't get too complacent yet. You had a big lead on Friday night. You almost blew that one. They might just put their foot down a little bit in that early third quarter. The ball gets tipped away. Mount Vernon coming away with it with 107 to go. They might want to make a little statement anyway. Another thing you got to keep in mind this week, it's a busy week for a lot of teams around here. Everybody's making up games, a lot of three-game. Mount Vernon, uh, this is the first of two games for them this week. Well, they kind of have well, a gauntlet because they're at Glacier Peak. I'm proud. It's, that's going to be a huge game for them. Which Jackson's will be there, too. Jackson's, Jackson's got two also. So yeah. We've got Cascade on Friday night, and that will round out the first round robin of the year for West Coast 4A. Under a minute to go here. Calvin kicks it into the corner. It's Dutton. Finds a cutter to the basket. That was number 10, Johnston. He gets hacked going into the lane. He'll step to the line for two. I know it's Dutton down there in the corner. He's getting that arm in the chest, and they're kind of letting him get away with that as they dribble across it. A lot of times they'll call that hand chest push off. And so far, not happening tonight. Let them play through it so far. They're certainly calling their share of fouls. We've had 19 already here in the first half. As Johnson hits the first free throw. One more to come here. This is it. Rebound coming down into the hands of Sissom. Jackson going to see if they can hold Mount Vernon under 20 for the first half. They're trying to build on the lead right here. 31 seconds remaining in the second quarter. On 14-foot floater off the backboard. Comes off the rim, bounces off. Calvin with the rebound. Now Vernon pushing on the other end. Into the corner. Chapman hits the side of the backboard, gets his own rebound. 
Got about another three, pulls up. Corner of the free throw line, leaves it well short and on the side. That's like almost a brick shot on that one. Two brick shots for him on that possession. Eight seconds to go here. He thought too much about it. In the half. Liddell into the lane, a runner, good! Christian Liddell, four points here in the quarter, 11 for the night. Jackson with their biggest lead of the evening on that final bucket. 45-19 is our score at halftime. We're gonna take a break. When we come back, we'll get you ready to go for the second half. We'll see if Mount Vernon can hang in there and try to come back against this tough Jackson Timberwolves team. You're watching STSPN. When you shop at Ace Hardware in Everett and Lake Stevens, we'll help you find what you're looking for and offer friendly advice too. Owners Greg and Christine are all about serving their customers and their community. They support local high school sports and many other community organizations and events. So the next time you need help with your to-do list or project around the house, bring it to Ace. They'll greet you at the door and help you find whatever you need fast. Show your support for locally owned businesses. Shop Ace Hardware just off Highway 9 in Lake Stevens and Evergreenway in Everett. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware folks. Every year, thousands of groups depend on Adrenaline Fundraising to help reach their financial goals. Adrenaline Fundraising is about developing leaders through commitment, work ethic, and follow-through. Adrenaline has several products including gold cards, coupon books, cookie dough, donation programs, and many other options to help teams raise the funds needed for their programs. Adrenaline's new app called Upay will help teams raise money while providing their supporters the ability to earn cash back on everyday purchases at places like Starbucks, Nike, Red Robin, and over 200 plus national retailers. Adrenaline Fundraising is this season's sponsor of the STSPN's Play of the Game Award. You know how I've been wanting to buy this truck and I've been so busy with work that I haven't been able to make it into the dealership? Well, Raritans of Monroe is actually bringing the vehicle to me. <gasps> I gotta go, it looks like it's here right now, I'll call you back. Too busy to schedule a test drive? Raritans of Monroe will bring the test drive to you. It's part of our new concierge service. Personalized car shopping built for today's customer. It's another reason why Raritans of Monroe is a customer service champion. Let us know what we can do for you. McDaniel's Do It Center is located in beautiful Snohomish, Washington. Locally owned and operated for over 40 years, they are proud to provide the Snohomish Valley with exceptional hardware, tools, lawn and garden, and sporting goods products. Their commitment to delivering legendary customer service and their outstanding employees continue to make McDaniel's the best and one of the most recognized Do It Best centers in the nation. Stop by and experience for yourself the difference between McDaniel's and the big box stores. Discover why so many people are choosing to shop at McDaniel's. We are all frustrated with the high cost of heating and cooling our homes. At GNS, we are completely changing the way you keep your home comfortable. Because we are Snohomish County's premier Lennox dealer, we can design a perfect system for you, one that will save you a lot of money on your utility bill. The Lennox Home Comfort System creates the ideal home environment. Enjoy innovation in every season with precise, quietly efficient Lennox heat pumps that keep your life simply perfect. Call GNS Heating, Cooling, and Electric today or visit us at gsheating.com. Did you know that Speedway Chevrolet is part of the Lee Johnson Auto family? That means 84 years of serving you the LJ way. Need a truck? We have the perfect truck to fit your needs. Half tons, one ton, two-wheel drives, and four-wheel drives. Our finance specialists are here to help you whether you have good credit or bad credit. We're just off Highway 522 at West Main Street in Monroe. Lee Johnson Auto Family, the LJ Way. 1945 here at the Den. Great year that was, huh? End of World War II that year. Nice victory for the United States. A nice victory, or so it appears, for Jackson tonight as they lead Mount Vernon by 26 here, coming out of the half. And Ron Henthorne, why don't you give us a rundown on the scoring totals for Great the first half? Great segue there for the 1945. 45 points for Jackson tonight. 11 of them by Christian Liddell, who's working on his average pretty good. Kevin Hahn with four, Serrells with eight, Korob with four, Ben Olson with 11, Grayson with two, and Capone filling it out with five. And quickly for the Bulldogs, Johnson one, Chris four, Bra uh, four, Calvin eight, Oliver two. And that'll do it for those 19 points there tonight. Let's see what happens. Out of the locker room as Ben Olsen takes things here for the, the Timberwolves. Jackson with the first possession of the half. Capone going right in strong, lays it up and in. We talked about it during the second quarter. It would be curious to see 
how Jackson comes out after playing a little bit flat during the second half of the other night against GP. And it's a nice start to the third period of play. First points off the first possession. To point out, this is a Mount Vernon team that doesn't shoot threes real well, real well either. 27% as a team this year. And you can't even get up a shot, can't even get a three-point attempt there when you're turning the ball over. They're going to get an offensive foul call against them. Calvin picking up his second foul. Did they call on? Chase Calvin, number 21. Yep. First foul of the half. Jackson already with their largest lead of the evening. Liddell thought about the three. Goes out to the left, fires one up, bounces off the front of the rim. Goes up high into the air, was hoping for a fall in towards the basket. Unfortunately for him, falls away. Olsen with a steal on the other end, looking to go into transition. Liddell, corner shot, in and out. Capone, offensive board, goes back up, lays it in. Capone's strong under the basket there tonight. So. Another offensive board for him. He has nine points for the game. A little floater there from Spencer Dutton, his first points of the night. 49-21 is our score. It's like a football score there all of a sudden. That should have been a travel. Double dribble shot. Nice job of swinging it out. Oh, <laughs> little trick shot there from Hoiby into the lane. Knew he was getting fouled. He threw it up over his head there. Couldn't get it to go down into the basket, but he does draw contact and he'll step to the line as Sammy Oliver picks up his third foul. Hoiby lucky to catch the rim on that one. Pick out. Shot might have slipped out of his hand there a little bit. He had a big smile on his face like he knew it too. Doesn't matter if you're down by two or up by 28. You don't want to airball the free throws. Make sure he doesn't on this one. Gets it to bounce off the rim onto the backboard and into the hoop. A little bit of rattle up there. Boyby with his first point of the evening. Half century mark right now for Jackson. 50-21 is our score. Again, both these teams playing in less than 48 hours. Schedule changed this year. It used to be Tuesdays and Fridays for the boys basketball teams. Nice spin move into the basket there for Oliver. Four points. And we're now going to a Wednesday-Friday schedule as the boys and the girls flip-flop this year. Might change the way you see Except rotations going in a later part of the game. If you've got a larger lead, you might start subbing a little bit sooner than you normally would. That doesn't happen every time, though, because the girls play sometimes on Friday nights as well. Well, so. the girls are Tuesday, Friday primarily. The boys are Wednesday, Friday. Oh, okay. And in the past, it was always the other way around. Oh, Isaiah Tuesday, Brown. Yeah. It, something that West Coast doing this year. They kind of rotate back and forth out of fairness. Pony up on top. Olsen, three, count it! Ben Olsen, his first points here of the second half. 14 points for the evening. 53-25, 28-point lead for the Timberwolves. Spinning into the lane. Brown missing the shot. Jackson wasting no time to get it to the other end. Liddell floated that one just a little bit over to the right of the target. Hit the rim, it bounced off. And we're gonna get a whistle here after the attempted shot. Korab picking his first foul. Against Wesco 4A, eight teams, so everybody plays each other twice. It's a 14 game league. Top five will make it into the by district this year. So Wesco and Kinko will be joining forces for a 12 team tournament. Top five going to the Super Regionals. Nice job by Brown to get to the lane. Somebody messed up there. He had a wide open layup. Kick basketball. Coming into the night, Jackson with a 5-0 record. Mount Vernon and Glacier Peak each 4-1. Mariner 3-2, Kamiak 2-3, and, and they actually play each other tomorrow night. And then behind them, you've got Lake Stevens with one win. Monroe with one win, and Cascade 0-5 on the year thus far. So again, top five make it. Who's Glacier Peak playing tonight? Glacier Peak is playing, let's see here. I think Cascade or somewhere like that. No, Cascade's at Monroe tonight as that ball's knocked out of bounds. I guess we'll have to kind of go through a new process of elimination. I'll take a look. Oh, there it is. Capone for two. Capone 
six points and a half for him. He's the inbound player on there to. We should keep Mount Vernon playing each other. Oh, that's right, Mariners. So Mariners got back-to-back -back games this week. Because they're playing Kamiak tomorrow at Mariner. That could be a really good game, the Battle of the Muckleteal School District. And that could be a game that ultimately might decide a final playoff spot down the road. It's a Mariner team that's very improved this year. Trevin Dillon, the Mariner alum, coaching at his alma mater and doing very well. Uh, oh, Mariner beat, beat the uh, Bulldogs here last Friday night. So they're beaten by it was 11 or 12, 58-46, right? Yeah, 58-46. Oh, Dillon getting called for his second foul. Yeah, on any given night can go off with Charlie Powers. We've seen him can put up some big games along with some of his teammates. And it's a 7.45 start time if anybody wants to head on over to Mariner High School. Well, you guys are broadcasting the game tomorrow, correct? Eagles game. Um, no, we... Oh, no, uh, we're taking tomorrow night off. We, we, yeah, we canceled tomorrow night because it was, it was just... So you get to see your family. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I think we've been going like every night solid except for Sunday. You're, you're the real we MVP. You should be wearing the Adrenaline fundraising shirt. <laughs> yeah. As Capone picks up his second foul, it's going to put Calvin on the line for two. He makes the first. Because we did wrestling on Saturday. That's right, the Panther Classic. You were there. I was there. I was broadcasting with you. You did that. He did the, uh, did the sideline reporting. Or yeah, we and that was champions. great. That was really good. had a lot of fun that with that one. Yeah, that was good. So oh, you like that. I was not complaining, which is good. You don't want me doing play-by-play -play wrestling. I've done that before, and it doesn't necessarily go very well, I'll be honest. We're going to get a double dribble call there. Oh. Turnover back to Jackson. Jack. Jackson, turn over and turn around, turn around. Uh, 30 seconds. Are we going to keep it here for a moment? Sure. So, Todd Elvick, let, let me just ask you is there a sport you haven't done yet? As a production guy, as the, uh, the founder and the, uh, ping pong. the CEO of STSBN, would ping pong ultimately be what you want to do? <laughs> no. a ABC Wild World of Sports used to do it. What was that back in the uh, early 70s? The U.S. China, I think they had a, like yeah, a world yeah. match of some sort that was. Yeah, I think we're going to do a big track meet in April this year. You guys have done track before, have you? We have. We've done it on the, yeah. It was, and, and it's always kind of a challenge because track's all over the place. That's just it. Track, you almost have to, if you can set up multiple cameras, great. If you can't, you yeah, pretty much that, just have that to is our plan. zoom yeah. in and, and hit everything in different spots. With we're going to need you down the field the, on the track. The throwing pits and everything else, it's a little crazy. We'll need you down the field on track. We've got some great track meets around this part of the state, too, in this Snohomish County. Certainly always when districts come around in the springtime, those are always fun. Korab into the lane, kicks it out to Olsen. Three ball, hits it. Olsen with three trays on the evening, his second one of the half. Give him a 17 points for the evening, 58-28 score. Yeah. Working on his average. Shot blocked by Korab, but he's going to draw contact. Or I think so. Is the connector, I should say. He's going to... Send Mount Vernon to the line. Korab with a second foul of the night. Scotty Forbes, who has yet to score this evening. And two att attempts to break that streak right now. And they need a vote. First one up and in. Jackson right now doubling up Mount Vernon 58-29 as a couple of different players checking in. It's Kane Press with his three fouls. Number 13 comes back into the game for Mount Vernon. Second free throw by Forbes is up and in. 58-30 is our score. Yeah, Friday night, STSBN back at it again. Glacier Peak versus Mount Vernon. It's going to be over at GP, correct? Yeah, we switched it out of the game. I uh, switched that game over because we thought uh, having the two second place people playing is going to be uh, a good game. Chance for Mount Vernon to potentially rebound after this one tonight. Look at Forbes, that three ball. <laughs> long three ball, bounces off the back iron. Searles comes away with it. Batted away by Brown. Count that one, long two ball on the line. Press, he's got six points tonight, two in each of the first three quarters. 58-32 score, 2.29 to go here in the third quarter. Point out if you're a Jackson fan, Paul Elvick, because I reach for my schedule here. You guys are doing a number of Jackson games down the stretch this year, too. We're going to do the Jackson GP game later again this year. But three of them coming up here in the regular season. That's before we even get to district play. Ball's batted away. Calvin grabs it. GP at home against Monroe on January 25th. That's a Friday night. The following Wednesday, three ball up. Missed. 
Searles jumped a little too early there. However, Hoy be able to come away with it for Jackson. Out to Searles, three. Trying to bring rain down with that one. Missed it. A couple of <laughs> boards down low by Hoybe. Gets fouled on the second time around. And he's going to. He's not going to go to the line. That was a long shoot. Yes. Press picks up foul number four. Yes, and then we look January 30th. That's a Wednesday night. And that should be one thriller of a game. Jackson versus Glacier Peak. Friday night, those two teams came right down to the wire before Jackson pulled it out. And then finally, on Friday, February 1st, Jackson's last regular season home game of the year. They will be hosting Cascade, the Bruins, the Brew Crew. Yeah, I, I would I would say that there's a pretty good bet that that game will change. Like, okay, so we you could flex out like NBC does with Sunday Night Football. Yeah, yeah, I, I, we have a few flex games when when it starts getting closer to the end of the season and we see you know there's going to be some good games and some you know we can't say that it won't be a good game but we have to make judgment calls. Tim Boyle just texted in says it looks good now. I'm assuming he means the uh, the clarity of the picture in the yes. broadcast and he's not talking about us. Ben Olsen just picked up his third foul of the night down there. Calvin down low. Capone's going to pick up a foul here. His third. Send Calvin to the line. Calvin will attempt to become the first Bulldog tonight in double digits. Sitting at nine points right now. Make it ten. Right on. Two for three from the line. Let's see if he can make it three for four. He does. Always good to be here at the den. We've, we always enjoy the atmosphere. Fans are uh, not the biggest crowd we've ever seen from Jackson tonight, but nonetheless, they're having a good time. Like you said, there are a lot of adults here. And as you look across, and you can see that on the camera, there's a, lot, a few students on the other side from Jackson, but not very many uh, Mount Vernon students came down to the game tonight. Nice reverse there. Oh, Hong can't get that one to fall. Yeah, spirited tonight. It's theme night. It's pajamas. Displaying good sportsmanship. We've heard some of the chants. They've all been positive. Floater from 12 feet out. Misses by Cress. Calvin coming away with the rebound. Under a minute to go here in the third quarter. Air balls, a fadeaway shot. Nice job by Olsen. Gets himself up in the air, recognizes the fact he's got nowhere to throw the ball. He's getting ready to land out of bounds and throws it off of Cress's body. Giving the Timberwolves another possession here with 45 seconds to go. Carroll's double team from behind there. Isaiah Brown knocks it away. Looks to go the distance and does. Mentioned it earlier. He averages close to 17 points per game. Put part of that on display right there. He now has 10 for the night. All of a sudden, now Vernon making a little run here. Well, Jackson's kind of been uh, trying to set something up, and then they haven't taken a really good shot. Really good. Mount Vernon, kind of a eight to two run in the last 90 seconds or so. Here we go, Serrells. Oh, thought we might see an amazing dunk there and decides to go a little conservative with it, and rightfully so. Yeah, he thought about it, but he also thought. Buzzer shot by Brown. He also thought if he does that right in front of Johnson and doesn't make it, he's, he's yeah, it's going to be a long walk back to the bench, isn't it? <laughs> we are heading into the final quarter of play. 62-36 is our score. Jackson out comfortably in the lead, and you are watching STSPN. <laughs> I've been wanting to buy this truck and I've been so busy with work that I haven't been able to make it into the dealership. Well, Raritans and Monroe is actually bringing the vehicle to me. I gotta go, it looks like it's here right now, I'll call you back. Too busy to schedule a test drive? Raritans of Monroe will bring the test drive to you. It's part of our new concierge service. Personalized car shopping built for today's customer. It's another reason why Raritans of Monroe is a customer service champion. Let us know what we can do for you. And we are back here at the Den, Jackson High School, fourth quarter, Tom Friel in the house. Hall of Fame, Snohomish County referee, sitting on over there, taking some notes, no doubt. Yeah. Just got a nice little shout out over the PA system. We'll have to show Tom this uh, later on. We've had Tom on the Prep Sports Weekly show on a couple of occasions, very active in the high school sports community around here, working with the Washington State Referee Hall of Fame. I, I know I butchered that name, and I'm not sure exactly what the association is, but Friel 
very active in that and a great guy to, uh, to boot. So good to see Tom in the house tonight watching a little basketball. And always wonder with those guys if they're watching the 10 guys on the court as much as they're watching the three zebra stripes. No doubt I'm sure watching more referee than anything else. A long two there. Sammy Oliver stepping just inside the line. I would have given three. <laughs> Just to make it a little more interesting here. Yeah, he, he deserved it. 62-38 is now our score. You mentioned right at the beginning of the broadcast, Ron, this is a Jackson team that put up some big numbers. We're slowing things down a bit right now. Nice job by Holland to get a couple of guys in the air. Gets over to Searles. Searles drives into the lane, tries to scoop it up between his legs and loses the ball but draws contact on the play. Was, that, was he really trying to do a trick shot there? I think he just was a little out of control and thought he was trying to do something to save face at the end there. 84 points is the most that Jackson has put up this year so far. That came back on December 19th against Mariner. 84-66 score. Christian Liddell. That's first getting, points in the second half here. Getting his team that much closer to that 84 mark. I'm not sure he's going to hit it tonight, but something to talk about when you've got a 27-point game with under seven minutes to go, and that's exactly where we are right now. Three ball on the other end. Shot is missed by Oliver. Adele knocks it into the hands of Olsen. Searles. What? <laughs> he got pushed a little bit there. That was, that was a nice Searles, little move, wasn't he, it? He's an interesting player to watch. I mean, he's... He's deceptive. He's, he's, very, he, well, he's very athletic. He's lanky. He's got those long limbs. On any given play, you, you start to, as soon as you see him elevate, you kind of wonder if you're not going to see something out of the ordinary. This particular time, all you see is a player going to the free throw line. They call that foul. He's still a growing boy. Searles put a little, uh, put a little more meat on that body, and uh, he's growing still. If he can do it over the next year, I think Steve Johnson's going to be very happy as he yeah. hits the two free throws. Is he a sophomore or junior? Junior. Junior. Yeah. He'll fill out a little bit next year and work out maybe when he get on the weight machine a little bit. 67-38, ball shot in the corner, Capone! Sends that one against the wall. It was coming out of nowhere there. It looked for a moment like Sammy Oliver was gonna have a nice open look in the left corner. Capone steps out, now we're gonna get a long three, count it! Scotty Forbes saw his buddy over there in the corner get his shot blocked, he said, you know what? I'll step about five feet behind the three-point line. Nobody's blocking me here. He's able to connect with a three. Well, Forbes is going to get his foul, too. All right, call it on Searles. Nice job by Forbes. Knocked the ball away. Searles recognizing that he had just lost control. Tries to reach back to get it. In the process, hits Forbes. Searles is going to get called for his third foul of the game. You got our schedule over there, uh, Ronnie? Uh, broadcast schedule? Yeah. yeah. Go by Forbes, up and in. Todd Ove, if we can figure out how many hours you put in this fall so far, a fall and winter, I should say. Basketball season's been a little crazy for you as Forbes misses the second free throw shot. Basketball tournaments, basketball games, a wrestling invitation on last Saturday. We haven't done ping pong yet, as you mentioned earlier. Oh, really Searles is tall, but he's not that tall. <laughs> On sales that pass well over his head. Well, one game we're looking at changing is this um, Roe Jackson boys game. Uh, we're trying to get in at Marysville to do the cross town rivalry between Getchell and. Oh, oh Getchell and Let's go. That's a, that's a game that uh, is going to be a little bit more heated than normal, too. As uh, it might be a heated game. A lot of folks know two of Glacier, uh, Getchell's top players returning from last year, Ethan Jackson. Cameron Stordahl both transferring to Pilchuck in the offseason. I know for a fact the uh, Ketchel folks weren't too happy about that. Olsen up ahead to Hong, lays it up and in. And there is nothing Getchel would like more this year, more so than probably even going to districts. They would love to beat Pilchuck in that game. Oh, yeah, what time yeah. they're going to play this year, other than potentially in districts? Yeah. Shot is blocked by Capone, but on the play, Brown is fouled and will go to the line. Capone's going to pick up his fourth foul, I think. Is that game at Pilchuck? It's at Getchell. It's at Getchell, wow. Getchell led by Malachi Knight, who's only a sophomore. 
phenomenal basketball player, even better baseball player, I'm told. I haven't seen him play baseball yet, but he's already verbally committed. Again, keep in mind, he's relatively early in his sophomore year. Already committed to playing baseball at Oregon State down the road. Shot was missed. But he's a terror on the basketball court as well. Starting for them as a freshman last year at the point. And of course, Marysville Pilchek. Conversation always starts with Ray Pond Battle. We saw him get 25 against Mally Terrace on Monday night. Foul on the play, but it's, it's a deep team. We already talked about Stordahl and Jackson. Luke Dobler coming back from injury. Yeah, he was a little cold the other night. I think he's just second, trying to get his legs under him. Second game back, so yeah, and he had eight points in limited time, so it doesn't sound like, well, it sounds like a lot for a lot of other players, but you're playing 16, 17 minutes and you get eight points. Yeah, Dobler, uh, that guy, he's, he's Kingma-esque. It's not a bad way to describe him. He can do a little bit of everything. Yep. Yeah, Luke, obviously, a player they want back at full strength before the district playoffs come rolling around. Aaron, one Aaron or two Callum there. looked good the other night. I mean, that's, that's just a deep team all around. 70-43 is our score. 27-point game. Capone, did he get? He did not, but he definitely altered that shot. Scotty Forbes, left corner, goes up for the three. And keep in mind, about 90 seconds go out on the floor. Sammy Oliver shooting from that same spot had Capone come flying out of nowhere to block his shot. Capone almost did the same thing to Forbes. However, Forbes shot it a little further left, and in doing so, it's the top of the backboard. Three ball up in the air and good for Liddell. Lead is back to 30. I can see Capone coming up the court talking to the referee saying, I never touched that ball. <laughs> and we're oh, going to get a brand new five change. coming in for Jackson. That's the, we're up by 30. Let's put the whole entire bench in right now. 4.29 to go. Brown, shoulder of the free throw line, misses it. Capone with another rebound. Oh, difficult pass to Searle. Searle floats that one up, misses the shot. Calvin coming down with the board. Now Vernon on the run. Brown, 14 foot floater. Rolls off the front of the iron and out of bounds. And that'll bring the bench in. We have six different players checking in, five of which are coming in from Jackson. Dell picks up his third. It's not going to matter. I think we're done seeing Liddell for the night. 4-12 to go. Nice round of applause there. 17 points unofficially we're on. Does that sound right to you? Uh, that's what I got, yeah. For who? For Liddell. Christian Liddell. 17 for Olsen. First free throw up and in. Now let's see if we got this correct. So far this year in Jackson games, we've had an adrenaline fundraising player of the game. Ben Olson on Friday night. Second free throw was missed. We had a Christian Liddell earlier in the year. Correct. I think that was against Pilchuk, if I remember correctly. We've also given one to uh, it's Kyle Bigovic, who isn't playing tonight. So those are the three you've given away this far, right? That's correct. So we got to mix it up a little on a 20 minute. I'll tell you what. I mean, we can. I'll tell you what I'm thinking. I know. About. I think I, I have a feeling you and I are going to pick the same guy because he's, he's been pretty amazing tonight. Let's start with C. His last name starts with a P, uh, C and ends with an I. I think it does. And he's scoring a lot and he's grabbing a ton of rebounds. We're not, we don't have our, our head statistician here tonight, so we're not keeping rebounds, but the pony's got to be into double figures for those as well. He is. Sure. Cooper Smith, a little behind the back action. Corner shot for number 50. High arcing shot, misses it. Nice job to get the rebound. That's Sissom. Back out. Yeah, I, I oh, saw when that left his hand, he had too much mustard on it. Too much mustard, not enough ketchup, misses the shot. Other end of the floor, missed by Dutton. Ball bounces around. Chapin's going to go to the line to shoot two. Don't watch him battle. Oh, For Smith, his first foul. So what do we think? Is it a Capone night? Are we going to call that right now, or are we going to wait a few more minutes? Uh, we can wait, but he's got 13 points and at least that many rebounds. I think he's, old. he's looking good to He's me. the leader in the clubhouse, let's put it that way. Yeah. We're, we're not very good at keeping this in suspense, are we? Like, no. What <laughs> number is he? It's number 44. It's the guy we're grabbing all the rebounds tonight. He's got four fouls, too, so they count. Now down to 3.17 to go here in the game. Jackson three minutes away from running their league record to 6-0. Three ball up. Shot is missed. Offensive board coming down over the back. They're going to say jump ball. 
Oh, nice job wow. by Isaac Grayson to get position yeah. on Chase Calvin. Steve Landro is a long way away to call a jump ball on that one, or a held ball as they call it these days. Long arching two, two ball missed. Another offensive board for Jackson. This has got garbage time, isn't it? Yeah, it's <laughs> 21 point game, you can call it, you, it's certainly not garbage time if you just get into the game though. You yeah. want to get some points here, Grayson into the lane. Blocked from behind by Brown. Brown comes away with the rebound, pushing it on the other end. Nice Almost nice. blocked, nice job by Brown to get to the hoop. That's a nice move by Brown. Korab almost getting a the block there. And the thing you have to point out about Jackson, these are guys that are coming off the bench, but if they're playing for just about any other team in this league, they're starting. Wow, this is a Jackson yeah. team that is extremely deep. Well, all these kids have been in the game too, earlier, so it's not like they haven't been playing. So, Long shot from outside for there Smith. His teammates love it. Cooper getting on the board tonight, 76 points for I the Timberwolves, a 30-point lead. I think that's his third attempt, but he finally made it. He got a big cheer from the bench there. Third time's the charm. Was that a game a couple weeks ago where he hit or had dunked the ball late in the game and the crowd just about blew the uh, yeah. the roof off this building? What'd Here's you say about favorite. the 84 points? Yeah, I mean, try it again. <laughs> that was so you, you jinxed him there, Todd. Oh, air ball on the three ball. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the 84 is their high for the season. And with a minute 52 to go, 30 point lead, probably not going to see it. But you never know. We'll see what happens. Mount Vernon now putting a few of their bench players in. And they've got a uh, tall task on Friday night to go home this evening and come right back down this way for Glacier Peak on Friday. That won't be any easy game for them either. Will not. Shot in the corner, Dutton misses it. Well, nice steal started. by Brown. He's still playing hard. you got to give him credit for that. This is a guy with a lot of pride, a very talented young sophomore. You're going to see a lot from him. Now, You're going to see a, a ton from him. Shot from the corner, up and in, count the three. Liam Johnston with his first field goal of the night. He now has four for the evening. 76-49 is our score. A little over a minute left to go here to get that 80 point mark you're talking about. I don't think it's gonna happen. No, it's, well 84 was the mark. They're definitely not getting that at this point. If anything, out of respect, they're going to slow the game down a little bit. Horab, spin move, fader, misses it. Nice job by Grayson. Grabs the offensive board, lays it up and in. He now has four in the evening, 78-49. We're down to 48 seconds left. I bet they'd like to hit 80. They, they might. You know what I mean? I mean, they look at the score and they're like, oh, oh man, it's just going to look good. But again, when you got guys that are coming in and, and not playing, they played a little bit in the first half, sparingly. These guys want to showcase their, their talents here. And they know STSPN's in the house. And Absolutely. Todd TV here tonight. Sammy you know, that's been, that's, been, uh, that's been going around a lot lately. Todd, Todd TV. TV. Like I think that was an awkward <laughs> thing, wasn't it? Second free throw up and in. You gotta like the sound of that. I think you're uh, you're enjoying it, right? Well, yeah. If your name was Ron or Steve, it wouldn't work very well. So, Todd TV, it is. <laughs> Thirty-four <laughs> seconds left in the game. I don't know what that does for help with uh, selling advertising, though. <clears throat> it's more for the ego than the advertising at this point. Yeah. <laughs> Need to get you a shirt with that on the back of it. Baseline, looking to pass it out there. Sis. System with a three. There we he go. He gets into the act. There's 81. 10 seconds to go. 30 point lead exactly. Brown with a three pointer on the other end. Misses it. Grayson comes away with the rebound. Steve Johnson immediately yells to hold it. He does not want to rub it in. Boy, be wisely grabs the ball, locks it into his arms, and locks up the victory. Jackson with a win tonight. 81 51 is the final score. 6 and 0 on the year in league play. Nine and three overall. Mount Vernon, meanwhile, falls to four and two in league. Seven and five overall. And we're going to take a quick little break here. And when yep. we come back, we will have our adrenaline fundraising player of the game. You're watching STSPN. Every year, thousands of groups depend on Adrenaline Fundraising to help reach their financial goals. Adrenaline Fundraising is about developing leaders through commitment, work ethic, and follow-through. Adrenaline has several products including gold cards, coupon books, cookie dough, donation programs, and many other options to help teams raise the funds needed for their programs. 
Adrenaline's new app called Apay will help teams raise money while providing their supporters the ability to earn cash back on everyday purchases at places like Starbucks, Nike, Red Robin, and over 200 plus national retailers. Adrenaline Fundraising is this season's sponsor of the STSPN's Play of the Game Award. Yeah, it's quiet, but I can hear. It's and quiet. there he is, our player of the game, Joe Capone in the house. 13 points tonight. Joe, we didn't keep rebounds here at the table. Well, we're going to say you you might have matched your rebound total with your points. You were uh, quite the force on the boards. And more importantly, you get a 30-point win this evening. Talk a little bit about the first quarter of this game. That Mel Vernon comes out to get a 4-2 lead, and we're starting to think that maybe this is going to be a, a thriller tonight. Then you guys kind of put your foot down. Yeah, well, I mean, they came out strong. Uh, they took the lead, obviously, to begin with. But uh, we came back fighting, and once we took the lead, we just decided we're not going to give it up. You didn't let down on the throttle at all. <laughs> yeah, that's what uh, we were really trying to go for tonight. And I've got to think for a guy like you, I mean, we've got you listed here at six foot four, but you almost play bigger than that in some ways. This is a Mount Vernon team that they don't have a lot of they have, they have a lot of height at the guard position, but really their bigs down low. You got a fairly good size advantage there. You kind of licking your lips coming into this game, knowing that hey, this this could be a nice night for me. Yeah. Uh, well, our coach was talking about uh, how we should really start working the ball inside more and I mean obviously I love him saying that kind of stuff because that gets me the ball <laughs> a little bit more but uh, yeah once uh, we saw that we had the height advantage I think we really I mean we've been working the ball inside more this game than we have in the past so I think we use that to our advantage for sure. Well and it's, it's a nice little problem to have because we always hear about not having enough of basketballs to go around with with Christian and Ben being able to score the way they do out on the perimeter and some of the other players as well it is kind of nice when coach says, hey, let's let's get the ball down low a little bit tonight, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially in a game like this when uh, we have the opportunity to score from all over, then when we really execute and can make it happen, that's when it comes together and we obviously can win by 30. Friday night, you guys had a 15-point lead on Glacier Peak at the half. Glacier Peak comes out in the second half and comes back to tie you guys. I'm wondering, did coach say anything about that or did he reference that game at halftime tonight because – you guys had a 25-point lead at the break this evening, and you came out and I think scored two immediately baskets. Was it talked about that, hey, we, we kind of let off the gas the other night, let's not do that again this evening? I mean, I think for us, GP, I mean, we're glad we won that game and everything, but I think that's in the past for us. Uh, we're really just trying to move on and play our game at the highest level we can. I start to look at this roster and the number of players you guys rotate in, especially late in a game, we saw the 30-point lead, brand new five come in, and you guys really don't let up on the bench. It's kind of fun to watch this team and how they appreciate everybody's abilities and talents. Talk about what it's like when a guy like Cooper Smith fires up a three in the corner and, and you guys get all jacked up. Oh, we always get so excited for our young guys on the team. I mean, they're great. We love them. We, we just really want to get them ready for when it's their turn. Yeah, well, you guys had nine threes out there in the game tonight and kind of balanced the scoring out between you and Ben and, and Jalen and uh, Lindell. You know, so uh, you, were, you were right in there, 13 points. I think uh, Ben had 17, uh, Jalen had 13, and uh, and Christian had 17. So kind of a nice foursome there to block things out with. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, that goes back again to the size advantage we had. So Jalen was able to score, obviously, and I got the ball a little bit more than normal because, I mean, our size advantage was really helpful tonight, and I think that showed. It was big indeed. Speaking of which, we're going to give you the shirt. We need you to hold that up and uh, wear that proudly, too. It's the SP STSPN Adrenaline Fundraising Player of the Game shirt. Oh, Look wow. at that big smile there. <laughs> as big as some of those rebounds and shots tonight. That looks great. And, and now we're coming down the stretch here. You've almost completed the first round robin of league play. Uh, this has not been an easy league this year either, has it? I mean, you guys have certainly kind of turned it on a little bit, but... On any given night, some of these teams can really step up. I know obviously tonight Mount Vernon not giving you as much of a challenge, but you looking forward to the second half of the, the season as well? Yeah, and uh, we're expecting every team to come out hard against us because, I mean, I know that every team wants to beat us, but uh, we just got to be able to match intensity and, intensity and just do what we need to do. Well, the, tar the target is definitely on your back indeed. Again, 81 points tonight, 81-51 victory. Joe, uh, congratulations on a great game from thank not you. only you but your teammates as well. And best of luck. You guys have Cascade coming up on the road on Friday. Yeah, thank All you. Right. All right, thanks, Joe. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. Appreciate that. And we certainly appreciate Adrenaline Fundraising for all of their efforts in sponsoring that player of the game. And a very worthy uh, player tonight indeed, Joe Capone, having a nice night. He did have a great night tonight. It, was a, it wasn't the close game we thought it was going to be, but it was a battle out there all the way anyway, just sort of point-wise why uh, it, it – Big 30-point spread was quite a bit. And we got – look at it. I love this. Can we get this on camera? 
J Joe and the family posing with that, uh, that adrenaline fundraising shirt right now. Everybody enjoying that. Hey. The hero enjoying that shirt indeed. And yeah, a, a fun game, uh, not as close of a game as we thought it might be. And this is a Jackson team, and we talked about it last year. We certainly talked about it a lot this year. When they're clicking on all cylinders, they are scary. Yeah, they're, they're a good team. They're getting better. And uh, it's kind of a tribute to this 4A league that these teams are pretty strong all the way around and, and the top end here. And I'm looking forward to these couple of rematches coming back again with these guys against and against uh, Jackson against uh, Glacier Week again later in the year. So we've got some good games coming up. Yeah, that'll be on January 30th. But before then, we've got other broadcasts. Again, Friday night, Todd Elvick, I want to make sure I get this right. Glacier Peak High School, Glacier Peak taking on this Mount Vernon Bulldogs team. And uh, folks all season long can be turning in to STSPN.com. Uh, not, not always four games per week like you did this week, but certainly a lot of other games coming up. And again, if you're a Jackson fan tuning in right now, at least, well, at least two more of your games coming up, I should say, is later on in the month. The Glacier Peak game, the Monroe game probably on the 25th. And then certainly, uh, Todd, you'll be covering these guys into districts as well. So stay tuned for those. And again, I uh, appreciate everybody watching tonight. We'll sign off at this point. Ron Henthorne, always a pleasure. Oh, my pleasure to be with you tonight. Nice job. Thanks to uh, all the guys out in the big red truck making things happen for us, too. Definitely. Without their uh, their assistance, we wouldn't be able to put this show on. And nice job, Todd Elvick, the five-tool player, uh, the back, yeah. getting the picture back on, showing that he uh, he's resourceful and he can uh, come in in the clutch and clean up whatever he He's like Joe Capone on a, he's like Joe Capone on a missed shot. He's in there to grab the rebound and go right back up with it. And Todd, you did an outstanding job. So, again, thank you for watching tonight. From everybody here at STSPN, I'm Steve Wood.